All right, and hello everyone. This is FTW, a weekly WWE and TNA discussion where friends talk the wrestling world and all of its laughable glory. This is episode, I'm sorry, this is Wrestling with Minecraft episode one and was recorded on August 10th, 2013. Wrestling with Minecraft is a YouTube exclusive we put together that includes both us building something on Minecraft as well as discussing topics sent in by you through Ask FTW. You can send us topics to talk about by emailing questions at ftwpodcast.com, on Twitter by using the AskFTW hashtag, or by tweeting us directly at FTWPodcast. Uh, you can also post on our Facebook wall or in our Google Plus community by responding to our show thread on the TWR forums, by leaving a comment on the on this YouTube video, or even leaving a comment on the site. Uh, tons of ways to get in touch with us. And uh, we try to respond to just about everything that is sent in. Uh, with us today is Nick. Say hello, Nick. Howdy, howdy. As you can see, he's in the background. He is Bray Wyatt. I am, uh, I am Daniel Bryan. Because you got to go with wrestlers. All right, on the docket for tonight, we'll be discussing the future of Cody Rhodes and Hulk Hogan. Uh, if anyone recently released by TNA will show up in WWE as well as do well, uh, what team from the past we'd like to see feud with a team of today? And on the Minecraft side, the reason why we're doing this in Minecraft, uh, we're going to be building a zombie spawner trap for easy XP and rotten flesh collection. Our server is located on ftwcraft.org, which is where Nick and I are playing right now. If you'd like to join the server, just send us a message with your username and we'll whitelist you. All right, so let me uh, let me turn myself around. Uh, basically, what we have here, uh, we set up, we, we did some pre-planning here. We have a, a building uh, that we put together with cobble, um, lots, of, lots of chests. We have a chest of stone brick. Uh, chest of cobble, uh, chest of miscellaneous stuff, just like uh, water and some extra tools, ladders, signs, and then we also have some glass plus furnaces. Um, and we've built this building around the zombie trap that we found. I'm sorry, the spawner that we found, uh, basically in the middle of the desert, right outside our our main town, which I would show you, but. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of zombies out there, and I don't want to run out there. So, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to build a uh, a spawn trap, basically. And and Nick, I think uh, I think I'm I'm going to put you in charge of building the exterior uh, of this building. Uh, basically, we we have all this cobblestone set up, and I don't necessarily want to be restricted to that. Uh, that's why we have the stone brick. I also got some. Um, some nether brick that that I brought in just in case we needed that as well. Uh, but overall, we, we kind of want to make this look nice and, and usable. Uh, this is kind of like a, a big empty room and uh, spiders can get in. So we definitely want to cap that as well. Yep. So uh, the main premise of what I'm going to do... Well, technically what we're going to do <laughs> is uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to dig this area out uh, use a basic water system. You've, you've, you've seen all the uh, YouTube videos before where we're going to push the zombies that are spawned out from one of these walls into into a ditch uh, that would lead to a water slash sign uh, ladder system up, up a tower and then drop them to their basic deaths uh, or at least leave them uh, damaged enough that we can hit them one time to get XP and... Um, uh, nice rotten flesh that we can sell in the shop. So uh, I guess without further ado, we should we just we should decide where where this this tower is going to go, Nick. Um, you know, realistically, we're going to go four down from where we are right now on this landing. Uh, w once we hit the ditch, so it's it's two down for the landing. And then four down for for the ditch from where we currently are, and then that's going to be the start of the tower, which will go uh, at about twenty three, twenty four blocks. So, just eyeing this this general area, Nick, where where do you think we should put this tower? 
Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, I would think here in the corner. Here in the corner? I let, yeah, at least the one going up. Okay, and then if it goes up in the corner, uh, we're probably looking at two blocks over from wherever that start is to where they drop. So do they drop uh, above this the sand level that we have here, or do, should they drop a little farther down? Because realistically, if you look at where this spawner is, we're going to have uh, a block above this. So, like, according to this wall, this top level of sandstone is going to be as tall as we need this little area to be. So should they just fall on top of that uh, over here on this on this this back wall, or would you want the opening to be uh, somewhere else? Yeah, about where this torch is, is looks good to me. Cool. All right, I'll get started digging out. And um, like I said, there's a bunch of stone brick. Um, I don't know if you want to get started on that, or at least um, once once we once we start digging this area out, we can start moving some of the cobble out and start capping. Sounds good. All right. While we do that, let's uh, let's go ahead and open up to our first question. Uh, this one was from Chris, uh, who posted it in our WWE and TNA fans Facebook group. He asked, "A friend and me have had an ongoing dispute. I contest that Jr. would be the greatest play-by-play -play guy in NFL history. My friend thinks that he would be better off calling hockey and basketball." She's crazy, right? JR calling a hit across the middle would be the greatest thing ever. What's your thoughts on that, Nick? Yeah, JR would uh, fit a lot better in football than in a faster paced sport like hockey or basketball, especially since there's all the stop and go action. Uh, there's a lot of downtime in football where JR can get his opinions out there. And uh, he's, he's not the uh, fastest talker, what with the, uh, uh, the Bell's palsy, I think it is. So. Yeah, hockey hockey would just be a little too fast paced for him and not enough not enough downtime. Yeah, I definitely think he would be he would be great on the every once in a while calls with hockey, but because it is so fast paced and there's so much stuff going on, um it, it would be difficult for for him to really uh transition that that um that emotion the entire time. I mean, we never heard him talk for like nonstop uh, throughout his his broadcast time in WWE, so I can't I can't really foresee uh, him being able to to uh, do a whole lot in that in that type of setting. But at the same time, I mean, to hear him calling like a like a hit in the middle or you know NHL or something like that, uh, you know, a goal I think I think would be awesome. But at the same time. It just isolated, isolated stuff is is when is when Jr. was his best. Exactly, hearing him call a fight in hockey that would be pretty amazing. But out, outside of that, okay. So I uh, I'm pretty much done with with digging out this base, and before I really really finish up, I wanted to walk up. We did, like I said before, we did some some pre-planning as far as what we wanted to do. Um, I wanted to show you... I'm going to show you part of that, and I did not leave myself enough room here. There we go. All right, so, uh, yeah, basically what we want to do is we want to we want to dig the landing two down. So it's going to be an 8x8 eight eight or an 8x10 size room. The, uh, the 10 or, like, the longest side is going to be where the water is going to be rushing through, or rushing from, rather. So let's see. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is seven wide, and right now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. nine. So uh, we would be pushing from this direction, which is good because that's 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 the way we wanted to go. And let me let me double check that because, and I can't remember what we did, what what we found out the last time we had tried to record this and. And that is how far the water will actually go. And yeah, a little, <laughs> a little note. We we did try to record this earlier, uh, failed somewhat in doing everything we need to do. But hopefully, this will be a a quicker video for you guys. All right. So where's that going to? So that's 
It's hitting that. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that was seven across. I think I think that'd be fine. I think I think I need to go one one more out. All right. So yeah, definitely. Uh, I think Jr. would be great for NFL, just because there would be that other guy, that 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 play by play guy that could, or I'm sorry, the like just a color commentator to, to come in and fill in with stories and you know why such and such is it is important. Yeah, they've got that in hockey too, but yeah, the play by play guy is much more important in hockey than than he would be in football. So, Jerry would be, sh- would be carrying that load pretty much all by himself. And, uh, I'm not sure that'd be good. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I'm going to reset my bed. Uh, we, we put our beds here, uh, because most likely this is going to get pretty dicey coming up soon. Uh, once we open up the zombies, and I'm sure I'll die at least once. And Nick, Nick may or may not die, but I, I know for sure I will. Yeah, if I fall off the roof, like I most likely will, I'll definitely need this. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's take a quick look at what what Nix is doing. So he's capping it right now, uh, which is looking pretty nice. And, and Nick, just a just a just a thought. I mean, you, you don't have to keep these these walls as they are now. You can you can take them down and do whatever. Go. Cool. All right. So so we got this. Let's go ahead and hmm, what direction do I want to go? I think I think I'm gonna go into this this piece of sand here to just even it out to eight, uh, just so we can get that ditch. So this is this is probably gonna take a few minutes. While we do this, um, another question. This one's from Jay. This is from the Google Plus group, and he asks, "Can someone explain to me why Cody Rhodes has a job? I don't find him overly exciting in the ring or on the mic. What am I missing?" Yeah, Cody isn't isn't CM Punk on the mic by any stretch of the imagination, and he's not the most exciting guy in the ring. But he's he's still a really solid talent, and I I think his uh, pairing with Sandow over these last several months has definitely helped his mic work. Um, I don't recall anything outstanding from before then, but uh, yeah, he's he's definitely carried himself well on the mic since then. So he's he's improving as a talent pretty much all around. Okay. Yeah, I I agree. I I really like Cody in general. I think he's best when he has um so, someone great to play off. So that whole story that he had with uh with Rey Mysterio, I thought I thought was fantastic. Um but the I mean the issue with where he's been recently, uh this whole thing with with Sandow um, it, it's just a problem where they didn't really get consistent time. You know, they had some fun segments, uh, but but overall, when when they were wrestling, a majority of the time they were wrestling to build up other teams. So Team Hell No uh, is is a great example. Also, uh, Tons of Funk. They they were losing a lot to Tons of Funk. So um, I think overall, like in the ring, when when he is used in a way that that can that he can really succeed as far as wins and losses go. Um I think I think he's done really well. And just just to go back to that whole feud with Rey Mysterio, um I thought I thought that was great. I thought every single part of it was was just awesome. Yeah, that whole obsession with the masks with uh Mysterio and Sincara, that that was pretty entertaining. Um and the feud with uh while well, he was with Sandow, uh they had some pretty good feuds. There was a feud with Team Hell No. There was that brief, very brief feud with, uh, or not even a feud. It was pretty much a one-off match against, uh, oh shoot, what was the name? Um, not DX, but the Road Dog, Billy Gunn, New Age Outlaws. Oh, New that's it. Yeah, yeah. That where uh, Sandow was redoing the theme song. That that was pretty genius. Okay, I'm uh, just to kind of explain what what I was doing um, over here. I am I'm digging out the 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 trench or the ditch that we've got going on, and unfortunately we uh, we've got well I I guess it's not really unfortunate per se, but we've got 
this cave underneath us. So um, I was trying to fill that up. But we've already pretty much lit the, the whole area around us with, with torches, uh, just so we don't have to do that later on. And wow, you, uh, you're moving pretty fast. This, uh, this ceiling is pretty much capped, which means we'll be safe from spiders, uh, very soon. Uh, also, just cause every, if those who are watching the video, I, I changed out my, um, my pickaxe for a wooden pickaxe because I've got this enchanted one, and it just carves through uh, sandstone and cobble and stone like butter. And I was just machine gunning through it and hitting the wrong uh, hitting the wrong blocks. All right, so uh, overall, I think I think we're at a good spot to um, start start to test this. And let me let me go up to the signs to make sure I'm not skipping a step. Uh, all right, so we dug two down for the landing. The ditch, we, we dug two down uh, one by whatever the length is. So we're going to be pushing from this side to this side. And then, uh, yeah, so then now we're almost ready for the tower. So let me go get some buckets of water. Oh, crap. You know what? We need to, uh, we need to dig a, a water source. Let me, let me do that real quick. This will save us from running out of water because I'm sure we'll we'll go through all these buckets. All right, cool. And just so I mean, I, I'm guessing most people know in Minecraft, but it's just a two by two hole filled with water, and it's a never ending source of water, which is nice for what we're trying to do. And actually, I need a few more of those. All right, the main idea of what we're going to do as far as laying down the water, we're going to be doing every other every other item. So, Nick, I'm going to start laying down water. So, just so you're aware. And let's do one, one more here. Oh, okay. Looks like I did not dig far enough. Hmm. Let me, let me count these again. One, two. Actually, let me put some cobble down to fit, to uh, stop this water. All right. All right, what what did I do wrong? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So maybe maybe we have to go eight. Maybe we have to go one more. Uh, that sucks. Okay, that's fine though. Because basically, we just want it to go right to the edge. We don't want it to uh, climb over this this part. Because if it goes if it goes to the edge, it'll, it'll push them over, and then we'll have another track of water that'll push them down. So let, let me go ahead and do that, and I'll jump to the next question. Uh, this is from Twitter, at WrestleBox1 asked, Will TNA ever realize Hulk Hogan is a massive financial burden that isn't worth it and fire him before they they go broke? Oh, uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I, I don't doubt Hogan's getting paid a lot, and that money could almost certainly be put to better use. Um, he is the big name, though. He is a big attraction. Um, but, yeah, he it, that money could definitely go to something else. Uh, whether TNA will decide to go that route, I kind of doubt it, considering that I mean, when they signed Hogan, their ratings almost doubled overnight. And um, even though they went back down again, Hogan's a big name to advertise with. Um, so I don't, unless, unless and until they start building stars, 
to anything approaching that level, they're not going to get rid of Hogan under under any circumstances. All right, my video just froze for a second, but um, yeah, I mean, overall, I, I, I agree. I there's there's a few issues here that I think they they need to resolve. And let me before I get to that, <laughs> let me see how far how, how far down we were. We wanted to have this be our general cap, so I think it's right. Nope, not that one. Right here is where our cap is. All right, so yeah, I mean, I agree. I, I agree that uh, that overall Hogan is is a financial burden, and we as as TNA fans uh, don't really see what that benefit is. Uh, but at the same time, I think this is a bigger um, example of how TNA really hasn't done uh, a great job at building stars. And I think at the end of the day, that is that is the main reason why they have kept Hogan. Um, and and I know this is going to ruffle some feathers as far as um, you, you know overall TNA fans thinking that TNA has a lot of great talent. And I think you know we we overall agree with that. But what 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 they don't have is a lot of household names, and part of that spike, you know, this is this goes back to a conversation we just had on FTW 176, and that is, you know, uh, one of one of the big issues with TNA is that, you know, as long as they're with Spike, their ratings are going to be where they are, you know, because because Spike is happy where 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 the ratings are. Uh, I believe they are the highest rated show on Spike right now. So there is no real motivation to to improve, but at the same time, uh, you know, overall, you, you you take Hogan away, and what other name has that that star power like Hulk Hogan does? Jeff Hardy. Good. Yeah, Hardy, Hardy, Angle, Sting. They're the closest that you get. Sting is almost there. But, uh, I mean, Hogan has the advantage of having been built in both companies, both major companies back during the Monday Night Wars. Sting was only a WCW guy. Um, Angle's pretty big considering his Olympic credentials. And, of course, Hardy was a big star in, in WWE. But, yeah, all those big names came from other companies, namely the WWE. The WWE. And uh, until TNA is able to reach anything approaching that kind of audience, they're not going to be able to build stars of that, of that magnitude, not, not and turn them into household names. Yeah. Well, I think, I think TNA will have that opportunity, but unfortunately it just doesn't seem like there is that main motivation from, uh, from spike TV. Hey, Hey Nick, can you, can you pass me? I don't know. One, two, maybe three ladders. So I can uh, yep. so I can get out of this hole. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, like, look at look at how WWE is currently struggling uh, with with making new stars. There there aren't a lot of guys that ha that are really making a huge uh, name for themselves. Um, and you know, s some of the guys that are, um, are like CM Punk or, uh, also Daniel Bryan, but look at where, where they came from. They, they all had, um, they all had, uh, an opportunity to make a name for themselves in the Indies with ROH. The same thing could be said with the track that they're taking with Seth Rollins and, and Dean Ambrose. TNA really doesn't have that ability. I mean, you can look at Austin Aries as being the the exception, but outside of Austin Aries, what other guy fits that bill? Fits that you know ability to uh, really, really? Oh, I just fell. Um, you know, stand out. Yeah, Rude was doing a good job when uh, he was world champ. 
Uh, of course, he's got the longest reign in company history. Um, he established himself as the top heel for, for a while there. But once he lost the title, uh, he, he pretty much, he pretty much lost his stock in TNA. He's not the big name that he used to be. And for a while there, he went on a, like at the beginning of the BFG series, he was on a losing streak for a while there. It's only recently that he started, he started swinging back up. So outside of Rude, there's not really anybody that has the potential to be that. Or let me rephrase that. There's a lot of people that have the potential to be that kind of guy, but there's, aside from Rude and Aries, those guys aren't getting to that level yet. All right, and just to show what, what we're doing. So we laid out this water on the landing, and it's making it all the way to the edge so that you uh, you basically fall in if you were a zombie or just losing complete, you know, just giving up c control. You're going to be pushed off the landing into this thing over into this corner. And this corner, this corner is where we're going to uh, start building the tower. So I think, I think overall we want to go, we want to go in just a little bit more over here. And let's go in one, one more. So uh, Nick, just a, just a thought of what what I'm thinking. So we're gonna extend this this little ditch out, so it pushes them into the corner here, and then go straight up, um, twenty blocks, because we have one, two, three, four. We have four blocks already, so we just have to go twenty more up from here. You wanna you wanna take care of that while I try to remember how to how to extend this water. <laughs> yep, sure thing. And maybe we can put some ladders up over there just so uh, so you can climb up. And yeah, good luck because I think we did build out. So uh, you, you're going to be outside for a little bit. Bring it. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna climb back over here and just kind of show you what Nick did as far as the uh, the overall ceiling. Uh, like I said, this we just we, we needed to cap this room because uh, we kept getting attacked by spiders when we were setting up the walls itself. Uh, eventually, we're we're going to be continuing this this little cobblestone path here that uh, I started just to cap this room, and then we can we can decide how how we're going to move forward uh, after that. And I'm going to go outside real quick. Oh, nice trap door! I didn't even think about that. All right, so over here is where where we're gonna have that have that tunnel or have that uh, tower tower start. So okay, let me let me dive into. Well, let let me let, let me add, let me add this again. You know, I think I think overall, we we like what TNA is doing. We we like a lot of their talent, but at this point, if you get rid of Hogan, if you get rid of Hardy and Angle and Sting, those are all your your veterans. Um, and your big name guys, who else is there that really has the star power that is going to sell seats? And you don't really have anyone outside of those guys. So, you know, I, I know we keep saying Hogan's a financial burden and people don't want to see Sting in the main event. And, you know, we're tired of seeing Hardy hold the title or compete for the title. Uh, but once you get rid of those guys, you know, it's it's almost as if you're, you're you're setting up TNA to fail unless they can really push hard to uh you know create create those uh big names but you know just looking at what they've done so far they haven't they haven't done that so but i think i think part of that isn't TNA i think i think i think it's safe to just blame a lot of that on on the relationship with Spike TV um it just doesn't reach anyone like for for instance you know, we've we've heard this before. If you stay in a hotel, it's it's most likely you won't get Spike TV. The same thing is in, in hospitals or uh, any other big uh, scenario where you're staying somewhere else. You, you're, you're not getting Spike TV. You're getting USA for sure. You're getting the you know that big name network. But as long as they're on Spike TV, I think they're always going to be getting the ratings they are, 
and they will always have an issue unless they have a big name like a Hogan. All right, let's jump into the next question. This is from Conrad Cushman on Twitter. He asked, how do you guys feel about Heel Ziggler as a face? Is he getting a good enough reaction, or does he need more time? Nick, I'll, I'll let you start. But I will say, be, before you really get into it, uh, we definitely need to give everything a bit more time. As far as the IWC is concerned, it seems like we we, we are quick to judge and hop on uh, this this judgment that things aren't where they're supposed to be, despite, you know, us only seeing it for a week or a month or, you know, one feud. I think, I think things need to a little bit more time to flesh out, but overall your thoughts on, on the face turn as it stands right now. Yeah, I think the face turns working out. Um, I think it'll take a little while for it to really blow up, but I mean, all this kind of thing takes time for takes time to happen and really unfold. I mean, uh, the summer of punk just didn't happen in a vacuum. There was a lot of build up to that between him and Cena. Um, let me think what else is there? What, uh, the feud between Rude and Storm and TNA. Like that didn't, that just didn't happen out of nowhere. Uh, Rude's heel turn. It, it wasn't just a, it wasn't just a snap of the finger and there he was. There was a lot of build up to that. Um, so yeah, any great face turn or heel turn or any great story development, really, it, it takes time for it to build and there just hasn't been enough time for us to really judge this yet. So that's my take on it. Yeah. I think the only major complaint that we can have is that, uh, the, the face turn has sort of pulled him away from competing for, uh, the world title. And I think that's only temporary, but still, I mean, that, that, that is one issue that has come up because of it. You know, we were all excited to see him competing for the world title. And now he's not, uh, the other thing is, um, you know, this, this whole feud with, with Biggie Langston is happening because of the relationship with AJ instead of, you know, uh, competing over, more manly things such as uh, a title or anything like that. So, and now I'm kind of lost here. I'm sorry. I'm kind of lost because I don't remember. I don't remember how, how to get this to work. Hmm. Ah, crap. So, uh, what what I'm trying to figure out here, and uh, hopefully I'll I'll be able to do it. Uh, we're gonna build a little escalator type type thing. So when they're when they're pushed up, they're gonna be pushed into up the stair up the staircase, which I think we've got correct. And then we want the water to continue over to uh, this 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 part of the uh, of of the of the ladder system. So let me uh let me let me get another bucket of water and see what happens when I do this. Um so yeah, those those are those are two main major uh complaints that that I can see. But overall, I'm not I'm not necessarily ready to give up on uh on Ziggler. I think dang it. That's not what I wanted. Uh I think I think Ziggler um can still do a lot of cool stuff. But I think I think it's just a combination of everything. A, he's not feuding for the world title. B, he's feuding over with Langston because of the whole AJ thing instead of, uh, you know, a title or I don't know something else. It's just like there's there's always something going on that uh, isn't isn't where it needs to be. And I think I messed up one more time. Yeah, I did. Crap. I'll get this. Yeah, I, I do understand the frustration about Ziggler not being in the world title race right now, but I mean, I, I personally see that as a positive because for the longest time, Sheamus was holding the world title. It was Sheamus and ADR for like five months. And then it was Sheamus and Big Show, or I, I might have that reversed, but it, for the longest time, the world title is just two guys feuding over the title. Everybody's locked out of it. 
and, and now we're getting a chance to see more guys in that title picture. So that's a positive I'm taking from that, even if we, we do have to do with, without Ziggler for a while in that title picture. Yeah, it's 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 basically it was it was delayed, but that's not. Dang it! I keep messing up this uh, <laughs> this is the staircase area. Ah, shit. But even even though it's delayed, here I think I got it. Even though it's it's been delayed, it's still not still not bad. You know, I, I think I think we just need to be patient and see where where things go. All right, cool. I think I, I think I got this. Uh, let's see. Let's see how far far you've gotten, Nick. Yeah, I miscounted uh, the number of blocks that I had to put up, so I'm I'm finishing up this tower here. All right, cool. And let's see where where you are. Uh, basically, what what we're gonna do once we get to that uh, that 24 block, we're actually going to um, basically make a bridge. Uh, that's gonna go one block, and then we're gonna drop down from there. So basically, the reverse of what you just did. So like r right here, if this if this was the top of of that twenty four block or twenty three block, then over here would be uh where where the hole is. So it's like a uh, a big uh horseshoe kind of effect going. Cool. All right, so. Uh, I got this 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 part done. Uh, overall, as as we wanted, uh, the zombies are going to uh, spawn on the landing. Uh, they're going to be pushed, and I'm just trying to climb the ladder so I'm not jumping the entire time. So they're going to be pushed into this ditch, and that ditch is going to take them towards the ladder, which is uh, where we're going to build the uh the water the water ladder so i think you know what i wanted to go back over there i, I made a note over on these signs of how to start how to start this ladder i should i should have i should have taken a look uh but yeah as far as ziggler being a face i don't know it's it's kind of weird like you know at wrestlemania or any other big match that ziggler has had he's gotten cheered so WWE is, you know, finally listening to that and trying to do something with it. And um it seems like, you know, now now that they're listening to us, we aren't willing, you know, collectively to give WWE a chance to really transition to where they need to go. And and that's that's the normal. I mean, look at look at Zack Ryder's push or anything else like that where you know, we, we ask for something, we ask for something as fans, we finally get it, and as soon as we get it, you know, we, we, we turn on the situation. Oh, it's not good enough, or oh, you know, they're not doing it right. Uh, I mean, even look at, even look at uh, a story that we, we just posted on, on FTW where, you know, people are automatically going with Daniel Bryan needs to be a heel to really make this, this match at SummerSlam work, or, um, you know, that, that sort of thing. And it's just unnecessary. I, I, I don't, I don't know why we always go that route as, as fans. Yeah, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. It's, it's like, you can compare it to a little kid in a candy store. Once he gets what he wants, that's not good enough anymore. It's, it's he wants to, the next thing, the newest flavor that just came out. It's, it, it, it's understandable, even at the same time that it's 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 pretty childish, really. All right, I uh, I forgot to collect water for this this ladder this tower system, and unfortunately, we've already laid out the water, so I have to like climb this huge river, and it's always awful. All right. So, uh, anyway, so yeah, the zombies are going to get over here. And they're going to jump up and get into the water. And then continue that climb. Hopefully, hopefully that's, uh, that's how this works out. And Nick, I know you're, uh, you know, we're laying some stone and some stone brick. I think stone brick, once we get above 
uh, is going to be great. But I think I might replace some of this uh, eventually with uh, with glass, just so we can see what's what's happening. Oh yeah, yeah. I should have thought of that. No, it's fine. I, I think I think it's better to build first and then decide what's what's actually going to go there. All right, and I'm running into an issue. Let's see. How should I best correct this? Um, all right, if you have to get down, uh, oh shit. Uh, let me know because I am taking some of this ladder down. I mean, you can you can totally like fall. And oh wall. no, I set up a I set up a ladder on the outside of it so I can just go down to the roof and go into the trapdoor. Cool. All right. Oh man, how did Joe do this? He's a wizard. All right, so I have to like sneakily put a sign up and then. And then put water on top of that. All right, cool. Oh, you know what I can just do? Man, I'm dumb. I should have just thought of that. I'm just going to destroy the ladder. And then just fill this this whole thing up with, with water. Where Where are you right now? I am on the roof outside the tower. All right, if you go back in and, and grab uh, a bucket of water, um, I can just have you drop it from the top, and then I'll fill it in with uh, with signs. Cool. All and I should come over here as well and get... You know what? Screw this. I'm... Taking the water out of this this part right now. All right, so. All right, shall I pour? Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I, I don't need to be there for that. All right, there it goes. Yeah, and that should theoretically fill fill this entire area, and then I'll uh, I'll just walk up with signs. Or swim up, rather. Sign, water, sign, water, sign. No, that didn't work. That didn't work how I wanted it to. So <laughs> it'll be a little difficult. Uh all right, let me uh I'm gonna go back down. That way I can I can remove my, my finger from this trigger and let you answer a question. The question is out of all the TNA new talents that I'm sorry, out of all the TNA talents that were just released, so we're talking within the last month, so Tara, Matt Morgan, Taylor Hendricks, that sort of thing. Um, who will WWE target the most to become future stars and why? And go ahead and take your time because this will take me a few minutes to get uh, get through this this latter issue. All right, yeah. Um, they've already picked up RVD. Uh, I think the next two they'll target will be Matt Morgan and Tara, just since they're the they're the most built up out of any of them. Um. Tara is pretty obvious. Uh, as Victoria, she was one of the most dominant divas that has ever been in the WWE. And uh, she could do a lot to build up new divas. Um, and she could also train them, too, uh, much like the way Natalia is doing the new divas. Um, she could also go down to NXT, uh, help train the women down there alongside Sarah Del Rey. Um, as for Matt Morgan, it's it's pretty obvious why they'd want him. Uh, he's improved a lot since he was there in the past. He's a pretty good mic worker now, and he's he's very very dominant in the ring. Uh, he's got a he's got a great style. He moves well for such a big dude. 
And uh, yeah, those are those are no brainers for the WWE to pick up. Uh, as for the rest of the talent that was let go, there's always a possibility that they'll bring back Luke Gallows. Uh, he's a pretty good worker, and he's not quite as established as Morgan as a big guy that can talk. But um, I don't remember anything of his that really stood out on the mic, either in WWE or in TNA. But I've I've heard him on a couple podcasts, and he's a pretty he's a pretty good talker there. So I think with a little work, that could translate well into in ring mic work mic work, and yeah, he's a pretty good worker overall. Uh, outside of that, I could possibly see Joey Ryan getting picked up at some point if he changed up his gimmick some. Uh, there's a guy in NXT right now, uh, Enzo Amore. Uh, think, think Robbie E. Just, I don't know, trashier maybe, but he's a lot more entertaining. Uh, just his mannerisms and his mic work is just very, very entertaining. You pair those two guys up. And that, that's a great tag team right there. Uh, just all kinds of entertainment, both, both in ring and on the mic. So, by the way, I almost died. Um, I don't know how Joe did this before. We were, and I, I can't remember how I did this because I, I, I tried to set this up at my, uh, at my house to, to get this to work, uh, as a basic testing ground. And yeah, I'm like totally failing, totally failing hardcore just because I can't see anything. That's the that's the main issue. It's like we we've we've blocked this up now, and I can't see, uh, I can't see anything. It's just so dark. You want me to go put in a couple of glass black? Yeah, I think I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take take this water out and see if that if that alleviates some of the issues, and we'll just go the reverse of what we were doing before. Um, yeah, as far as far as that list goes, um, I definitely like the idea of uh, Matt Morgan. Matt Morgan is some guy that that we've we've all uh, been curious why um, TNA never really did anything with him, and and I'm sure I'm sure there's reasons. You know, there's there's just got to be something that that we aren't uh, oh, that that we aren't aware of. But at, at at the end of the day, um, I think I think he would work out the best as far as being like that that big man talent. Vince likes big dudes. He's got the look. He's got uh, he's got everything you basically want out of um, you know a big impressive looking monster. And um, you know that's something that that WWE really doesn't have uh, right now. They they've got. Um, you know, outside of Kane, uh, who else, who else do you really have that fits that, uh, that, that character mold that they're a good worker and also, um, also good on the mic. And I I think, I think Matt Morgan did improve on the mic, but he just didn't get enough time to really, to really show what, what, what he could do. And that's at, and that's something that that we've all complained about. Uh, that's something that we've all been curious of why why TNA would not give him really the the, the major opportunity that that they that they should have. But again, I, I think I think there's got to be you know there's there's got to be a good reason why why they wouldn't have. I just you know unfortunately we don't know. You know we're just we're we're on the outside looking in. Uh, as far as the the other names you, you had listed. Um, I really like Joey Ryan. I think Joey Ryan would fit the WWE mold really well, um, specifically because look at uh, look at what they like to do. They like to take guys and, uh, generally speaking, make money off of them. And who have they really made money off of that we haven't really liked? Um, Santino Morella is a good example of a character type that Joey Ryan could really fit well. Um, you know, it's not it's not the big star that that we think Joey Ryan can be, but it is it is something that WWE has a proven track record of making successful 
uh, despite it not being like the success that you know that that we uh, like as as smart fans, I guess you can call us. Um, you know, we we don't necessarily like what they did with with Santino, but he was still successful for WWE. He still made them a lot of money, and um, you know, he was he was one of the major pushes for for the YouTube channel. Uh, his show was was hilarious. So if if they if they did the same type of thing with Joey Ryan, I think uh, I think they could do well. And he's he's a, he's the type of guy that 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 could make it work. Yeah, Joey Ryan YouTube show would be amazing. All right. One of the major things I don't like about doing this uh this ladder system as soon as you put a sign down you start falling. And then if you have to go into your, in your inventory, you just you you automatically just fall. And it may, oh, yeah, that, and it makes sucks. balancing uh, awful. All right, I'm almost done. I need uh, I need one more. Okay, you said there was going to be one gap of separation between the way the zombies are taking up the tower and then going back down into the trap, right? Yeah, basically we we need we need a bridge. So it's got to be two blocks high so that they can they can uh move around in it and you probably want to make it three blocks high just in case they want to jump. It'll give them that that room to 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 jump. So it needs to be three blocks high and we're going to put water in the bottom so that it uh will continue to push them just like we're doing in in the ditch here. Okay. And let me uh let me walk to the outside just so I can see what's what's going on. Oh, cool. Uh, one one thing to note, uh, you probably don't need to have all all sides done. Uh, like like these these corner blocks could probably get taken out. You know, next next step or, or not next step, but like when we're when we're cleaning it up and whatnot, just to save some blocks. Just a thought. Mm. Yeah, but, that's true. But yeah, I'm, if if you put like uh two blocks here. I'm gonna basically take water and push water down down towards the uh, towards the the center. So I'm gonna put water here, and it's gonna push them over this block that's here, and then down. If, if okay, I got you. Um, and yeah, like I'm trying to think of. What what other names were released? Uh, we also had Terra, and I think I think we can all agree that Terra doesn't really have a lot of time left. Um, so she would be great in NXT. Maybe she has one last run, but considering what WWE is doing with their divas right now, it's really hard to uh, tell what's going on. Is Diva Jill in here? <laughs> is that who I'm seeing move around? Uh, she's running around up there some. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing a name move move around. I know it's not you. <laughs> yeah, she logged in. Cool. Uh but yeah, so so we have Tara. Tara might have one one last run with her, but uh but who knows. I, yeah, I, I think she'd be more of a training. If the WWE did pick her up, it'd be more of a training of a training role than anything else. And that's that's what I would do. That that's where I would put her, but would she be happy there? I don't know. But seeing as that she is, you know, uh, I think she opened up a restaurant and um, she's before she had she had that bike shop. So uh, overall, I think uh, I think if she didn't sign with WWE, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I think I think she's at a place where she's ready to to move on. So it would have to be a, a really big opportunity with WWE or a training opportunity, which I don't. I don't know if if there is that spot for her, but hopefully, hopefully there would be. I mean, she's fantastic. Uh, she's one of the uh, the the best wrestlers that 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 we've seen. Um, so I think she she definitely has a lot to to teach the the next generation. Sarah Del Rey. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, man, who just who who just. Who's the other one that left? Taylor Hendricks. Sorry, 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 Taylor. 
Uh, yeah, she she is another one that could do well with more time. And I know she is still in OVW, so she's not completely out of the TNA uh, loop yet. But I think with more time, she she can really uh, do some good things. But it, it's she's just unproven. Um, so that that would be hard to tell. I mean, WWE can make stars out of anyone. Um, it's just whether or not they give them the time. And if TNA really didn't give her the time, I can't see WWE doing it. Uh, at least at least not in that capacity. And another guy uh, who was in that list was Crimson, and I I I dislike Crimson so. To me, I see no real major future with him in either organization. And I know, I know, Diva Jill will will uh, ar- argue that uh, she she is liked Crimson, but o- overall, I I just can't stand him. I think he's awful on the mic. I think he was pretty ugly in the ring. Uh, and for them to give him like that streak storyline, I thought was was really really awful. Yeah, I have become a Crimson supporter. Um, ever since, uh, he went down to OVW to, to, um, basically to, to improve himself. Um, I always thought that streak was a joke, but it it got his name out there. And I think he's turned himself into a pretty decent character and worker in the ring. So I props to OVW for, for getting that done. Yeah, and I guess I guess that's another thing that, that we need to talk about. I mean, when he did come back, um he 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 came off much better for me. I I was I was much more open to Crimson being back. Um but if you look at the overall landscape of what OVW has done for for TNA, um outside of outside of Crimson and really that's that's not um something we can really bank on only because we really haven't seen it. Man, look at all these zombies around us. Ah, oh, this is all. Awesome. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm just trying to think of, of what else OVW has done to really help the system. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not real. I, I like what some of the TNA talent has done in OVW, but overall I'm not really complimentary about OVW in general. Because, I mean, they don't really prep the people for TV, even though they did just get a TV deal with Ion. Um, and I'm not sure how they're preparing the the female wrestlers in particular, because uh, I think I've mentioned this before on, on a past show, but their women's champion, I don't know if she's still champion right now, but uh, at one point, the women's champion, Trina, I mean, she couldn't even get a she couldn't even pull off a clothesline and she was horrible. She was just a, a brawny looking woman. And she, that's all she was is like a fitness model. That's it. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know much about her. Um, I, I have heard negative things about her and I, I think this really ties in well to what we were just talking about as far as, you know, why they keep Hogan around and you look at, you know, just what what they've done overall with uh with with their talent um OVW really hasn't done them many many favors as far as building new guys and that's that that's a, that's a real shame and I don't know if that's just a problem with OVW or if that's a um you know just a just a problem with the overall mentality that that they've had uh, as of late, I mean, look at gut check as a, as a prime example, you, you know, we, we were expecting gut check to really help, uh, build new stars and, um, it failed, it failed, uh, hardcore. Oh yeah. All right. I'm just helping you, uh, lay some of this, this stone brick out. Uh, okay, well, this is looking pretty good. Um, I think if this is going to be our base. We should probably go a little bit higher. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go three high over here.
Okay, and we're and we're doing the one block in the middle, right? I think so. Okay. I, I didn't want to step on it just in case you were uh you were about to collapse collapse me. All right, well, up here is looking pretty good. Um, we probably should cap it up here, but I'm not. I'm not too worried about it. So uh, don't don't break the block yet. Just just yet. I'm gonna test this water out to make sure. Actually, I can't do that because I didn't bring enough water. Uh, let me let me let me go let me go back down and get some water. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm trying to think of who else was on that list. Um, I, I suppose we could we could talk about Jesse Sorensen. You know, would Jesse Sorensen have have an opportunity to uh, go to WWE? Does he have the talent and the and the ability to to do something over there, or, or is that too much of a risk? Do you think just because of his injuries? Um. Definitely pre-injury, he had all the talent and potential in the world to succeed anywhere. Um, I've been hearing that he's been doing shows recently. Um, whether or not that could translate into a re return to TV for either company, I, I'm not really sure. But if he, if he is able to do t uh, house shows, then chances are even, I think, that he could make her turn to TV wrestling and maybe even go to the WWE. Uh, if, if he can, I, I definitely like that. He was a great talent. All right. I think I think, yeah, I think I'm good. Actually, that, that might be a little too high. I think this is too high. Actually, no, this is probably not too high. I think we have to go one more block up. On, on this part of it. Just because I think I think we do need this sign here. But but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But yeah, I th I th I think we should we should do one more block up just so that they can't jump out. And then eventually we'll cap it. And did you put a ladder over here? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is one. And I'm a klutz, so I fill it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, all right. So while we're continuing to do this, uh, I wanted to talk about the next step that I'm going to add to this. Um, we're actually going to have them fall onto a hopper. And then that hopper will be attached to a chest so that when they're behind the, the gate we're going to set up, which I, I think we'll, we'll probably use like a piece of glass or something, uh, just to, to have a block in between us and the zombies that fall down. But, uh, they'll, they'll land on the hopper. Then when we, when we hit them with our, with our sword or whatever we're using or our hand, um, they'll, they'll drop whatever they're holding or their armor as well as, uh, you know, the rotten flesh into the hopper, then that will appear in the chest, and then we can just reach in the chest and get it out. And I think overall that will be that'll be pretty classy. Sounds like fun. Um, all right, so is it... Is that daytime? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, the tower is kept. All right. So overall, I'm trying to think of. Oh, that's right, because we are going to cap this. So we're just going to have to remember that. Uh, once we do cap this, um, that's that's where our our opening is going to be. Where you know, wherever that is. So maybe maybe what we should do, and actually, I I can probably do this while you're finishing up the tower. I'll, I'll cap this room just so we have a place to put the uh, the bottom. So I'll, I'll work on that right now. I'm gonna take this, right. I'm gonna take this water down so it's a little 
a little easier. Uh, okay, so, and then as soon as you you get to a place where you're you're happy with uh, with with the tower, um, we'll, we'll go ahead and 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 start testing. And actually, you know what? I want to cap this with glass just so we can watch. Yeah, I pretty much capped the tower, so we're good to go on that front. Uh, even the part where they fall down? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, let me go. Let me. Oh, crap. All right, and once again, uh, I was hoping to have this done <laughs> within an hour, but it still took us uh, longer than I was expecting. But that's okay. Whoops, never mind. That's a part of it. I'm done. All right, so this is here. We need to go up here. And then overall, I think we're going to keep this room pretty dark. Uh, you know, we're going to have to just because we'll have the spawner rolling. But it should it should be okay. All right. And I think I think what I'll do for this part, I'm just going to speed up the video. But we've got about two more, two more questions to go through. Uh, how are you on time? Oh, I'm good. Okay, cool. Oh crap! 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 I've got a I've got a zombie attacking me. Why? Why does that? Why did that happen? I was not. Uh, why is it spawning already? Maybe because I took all those torches down. That's lame. All right, that should that should help. All right, let's go with the uh, with another question. Uh, this is from Blue Wizard. He asked if you could. I'm sorry. This is from the TWR forums, and he asked if you could pit a superstar or stable from the past against a superstar or stable of today. What matchup would you choose? Oh, gosh. let me see here. I'm not real versed on wrestling superstars of the past so uh let, let's just go with uh cm punk versus randy savage I, I think they're fairly similar and if not styles then at least general uh crowd appeal that they're, they're both awesome on the mic they're great in the ring so i i think that'd be a pretty entertaining pretty entertaining storyline to watch. Yeah, I think that one works as well. Um, just because there's been so, so much, um, you know, talked about as far as CM Punk using the, the elbow drop and the whole, uh, the whole thing where he, 
you know, points up to to what we assume is savage. I, I don't know. I don't know if he's actually come out and said that that's exactly what he's doing. But uh, overall, he, he is he is paying homage to uh, to Punk. Or, I'm sorry, to to Savage. Uh, so yeah, I, I suppose that would be a good one. But at the same time, I would almost rather see a Jay Lethal versus Savage, just because he does the whole, uh, basically the same the same idea where he is where he's paying homage to to Savage with uh, with with his portrayal. Um, I think that would be really entertaining, at least at least yeah, segment wise. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That'd be awesome to watch. Crap. And uh, overall, lethal. I mean, he was he was pretty pretty awesome. All right. Dang it! Oh, that's why. There we go. All right. So I got this so that um, it, it'll fall into the hopper. And then whatever's thrown in the hopper will... Uh, man, we already have zombies down there again. What the hell? Just because I, I took torches off the walls, you think? I don't know. Maybe. All right. Well, let's... I'm going to put up some more torches up here. And then, uh, yeah, go ahead and kill them if you could. Try not to die. All right. And I will go ahead and uh, let's... Let's go up here and test this again. Uh, did you leave the ladder up here as far as going down that hole? Oh, yeah, you must have because I saw it. That's right. Duh. Yeah. All right, so we'll have to take that down. I can take that down right now. Oh, shit, 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 shit. All right. So yeah, I've got this uh, this major issue because I'm using a uh, enchanted pickaxe. So anytime I, I want to do so, like I can't be precise with it. So I have to remember not to use it. Um, all right, so that's that's good there. I gotta fix up the the top. So. Let me go back up here, and yep, I got water. Cool. All right, so what I would recommend? Well, hold on. Let's let's hold off. Um, all right, so other other things that I would like to see. I think I think Stone Cold versus CM Punk is a, an obvious one that all fans have uh, really pined for, just because they've uh, they've they've teased us with it. Um, I think I think that would be a good one. And just so you know, I, I know you cap this, but I uh, I took the I took part of the cap off so I can climb out. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, is the ladder still up on the outside? Uh oh, no, it is not. Uh, okay, that's fine. I'll uh, I'll figure something out. Really, you took both ladders down. Man. Yeah, I thought we were done up there. I was cleaning it up. Jeez. All right. Well, I'll just have to be careful. Oh, first I got to put a sign over here. So put a sign right there to make sure the water doesn't go down the hole. And put water right here. So as we're, as we're climbing up. Oh, no, I messed it up. All right, this is going to get dangerous because... I failed to take. Ah, oh, man, this sucks. All right, let me uh, let me take. Oh shit, 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 shit. <laughs> uh, so what's happening is I accidentally like I took the ladder down. I put it in the wrong spot so that uh, it was blocking the water, and then I hit the wrong ladder so that I was being pushed down the down the hole. So okay, I'm I'm coming back down. Uh, we should be able to go ahead and test this out. And yeah, fi I figured out why those zombies are coming in. There is an unlit corner. Oh, okay, cool. 
All right, can you do me a favor and uh, are you on the roof again? Oh no, you're right there. I passed you. Sorry. Um, can you go ahead and put that ladder back on the outside just in case we have to climb back up? Because I have a feeling that we're going to have to. Yeah, sure. And then I'm going to start laying the water out again, uh, just so we can get that ready to go and test it out. Um, I think some some other names I would really like to see back in a wrestling capacity against some of the newer talent. Uh, I think Daniel Bryan versus Bret Hart would tell a, a great story. Um, I think you can look at uh, like a Shawn Michaels, um, Dolph Ziggler matchup uh, be really slick. But I would I I've I've heard that before. I would almost prefer. Uh, a tag team with them just because I think their styles match so well but like in the duplicate type standpoint where they, they both pretty much do similar things. They both sell in the same kind of way. Um, So I think a uh, um, I, I, I think it would be kind of weird to have someone sell for Shawn Michaels as well as he's selling for them. Uh, because usually it's it's Shawn Michaels is selling for, um, you know, wh- whomever is it the the Undertaker or uh, Triple H or wh- whatever. I, that's that's when you really like Shawn Michaels the most is when when he was when he was really putting someone else over and making them look awesome. So could he make Dolph Ziggler look awesome? Totally, but um, I don't know if it would be in the capacity that we're we're hoping for. Yeah, that's true. I I think one that I just thought of would be uh Jay Bradley versus JBL. Basically the same guy, only maybe twenty, twenty five or thirty years older. I don't know how old JBL is. Well, would you I don't know. I, I don't know if I would like that as much. I would almost rather than be a tag team as well, just because that would be such a dominant tag team and they're both uh, they're both cocky and great on the mic, at least from what we've seen with uh, with Jay Bradley. Um, I think they would mesh really well in that capacity. Uh, yeah, that's true. We're, It'd basically, be just like wrestling a mirror image. Yeah, where where are you right now? I am right now on landing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start. Well, actually, I should I should probably finish this part of it. Give me a second. I got one more piece of Yeah, I can do it here too. Uh I got one more piece of water to put down, I think. And then we should be ready to go. Oh, actually no. No, no, I'm, I'm that's right. Sorry. Okay, I think we're good, but I might have made a mistake on the ladder again. <laughs> I know that's where we got hung up last time, but I think uh, I think I might have made a mistake there. But we'll see in a second. All right. Um, I think I think we can go ahead and start testing. So I'm going to take these torches down. At least uh, at least the ones real close, and then I'm going to pop out of here. So hopefully this will spawn. Uh, oh crap! No, you know what? I never took the, the torches off of these guys. All right, this will be fun. All right, let me know if uh, they start spawning. Do you? No, no, nothing. Man, I hope we didn't. Uh, nothing yet. Dang it! I just want to test. Come on, spawn. There's still a couple torches on the back yeah. end of it.
This is so difficult. All right. Oh, cool. There they are. All right. Well, I wasn't ready, guy. All right. So let's see where they go. All right. So this is, uh, they're pushing up. And are they making it up the. My video froze. Okay. We're back. Are, are, are they going up? Yeah. It looks like they went up. All right. So we should have, we should have put some glass up here, but I forgot. Um, so once we're done with this test, maybe we'll, maybe we'll clean it up. But yeah, if this, if this works, uh, well, we should be, we should be golden. Nice job on the glass here. I assume that was you. I don't remember doing it. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> All right. So right now what we're going to find out is if it's, uh, if it's too tall or not. And I'll let you. There it is. All right, so go ahead and hit it with a sword. All right, so it's a two, two hit. And then if you open up a chest, whatever they had in there should be uh, should be in the chest, right? Uh, there's nothing there. No. Here, one second. Is that in the hopper? Man, what happened to the rotten flesh? It kind of fell outside the tower, man. Uh, that's possible, I guess. I hope I hope that's not something that happens a lot. So, uh, all right. Because of that, um, I, I guess we 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 ha we have it. Well, okay. Because it was a it was a two hit. Uh, we we have an option to um, go ahead and drop this down a few more blocks or raise it up a few more blocks. I think it'll be easier to raise it up, but we don't necessarily have yeah, to do probably. that do that now i think i think i think we got a good base to to work with okay so it was a one hit for me oh here okay so we, we have four we have four in here uh so so everything that that they dropped uh appears in the chest or if you're standing too close and maybe that was your issue if you look in your inventory do you have any rotten meat on you uh i got five that some of that was from earlier so i'm not sure how much of that Okay, because yeah, I, I I did notice if you stand too close, it it automatically goes to you. Oh, okay. So, but theoretically, I mean, we we could we could set this up so we can just stand in here and just wait. Like you can go away from your keyboard as long as this is lit, which it is, so they're not spawning up here. Uh, nothing else is coming in, so you can kind of go away from your keyboard and come back and have a a full a uh, full area of like a full shoot of. Zombie the kill, which would be really nice. Um, we should get rid of the two torches that are still down there, though. Three, three torches, man. I did a, I did a poor job. And then we probably should close up, uh, up this area, just so there's not a, a way for them to escape, even though they haven't yet. Yeah, I'll set up a, I'll set up a door there. So I don't know. Uh, I have no more questions. I don't think. Yeah, I am. I am completely out of questions. So we've pretty much done the Ask FTW bit. Uh, we have built our our tower, uh, and it is working awesomely. And is it? It must be. Must be daytime outside because I'm hearing a lot of zombies die. Yeah. Yeah. It's just daylight. So just to give you guys an idea, and I'm going to walk outside real quick. Just to give you an idea. Ah, dang it. Um, we're in the middle of the desert. There, yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing zombies outside just burning. But we are in the, uh, in the desert, and I don't know if this is how it is on, on most servers, but this is how it is uh, on our server. But there was just violent mobs everywhere in this thing, and it doesn't matter how many torches we put up. And crap, there's a creeper. Uh, it doesn't matter how many torches we put up. Uh, it just seems like they just keep coming. All right, so I got this creeper coming after me, but I let him away from, from the tower. And almost killed him. Almost there. Come on. 
die. All right, cool. So uh, this is what our tower looks on the outside for right now, but we'll probably replace some of this with glass. Uh, we just ha we just can't replace the top with glass because as soon as they get out of the water, they'll start burning, uh, and we don't want that. We we want them to die once they come down here. But yeah, overall, uh, this is looking pretty pretty awesome. I think uh, I think we did we did much better than uh, than the last time we attempted this. Agreed. Uh, another nice thing about about this, and I'm sure this is a bug that they'll fix in the next release, and I'm hoping uh, they don't, but they might. And that is the midget zombies that come down, even though they're only one block high. They get, they still get stuck there. So I'm, I'm hoping that's a, that's a trend that that continues. And just to kind of explain what the hopper does, if you're, if you're unfamiliar, the hopper will basically collect anything that's there and push it out into something else that you give it. So that could be another hopper. Uh, that can be a chest. Um, I believe. I've also seen people use uh, furnaces, so you can throw some coal in the hopper on top of a furnace, and it would uh, it will auto feed the furnace uh, when 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 it runs out of coal, kind of thing. So you can have like an automatic smelting unit. I, I think Diva Jill has one of those in her houses. All right, so this guy is getting stuck on that ladder, so I'm just gonna remove it. Somehow. Uh, yeah, this will be difficult. Uh, wait, 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 I can do that later. He'll be unstuck when, when, once you move. Uh, but overall, I mean, is there anything else that you want to you wanna get done here? Or should we uh, just wrap this up and show, show photos on the uh, website and Facebook page once we're all completely done with, uh, with the cleanup work? Yeah, I think I'm good here. Okay. Well, we can keep moving. And uh, for everyone that's watching uh, on YouTube, thank you uh, for for checking this out. Uh, this is something new that we haven't done before. We're actually reaching uh, two very different audiences. So who's who? Who knows how this will actually uh, how this will actually succeed or not? And that is, you know, the Minecraft audience and the wrestling audience. But there's quite a few of us wrestling fans who do love a game of Minecraft. So hopefully that's not just a, an us thing. I know I know TWR is is into Minecraft as well. So uh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe maybe you guys will like it. Maybe you won't. But regardless, uh, provide us some feedback in the comments. And again, uh, all these questions that we asked as far as wrestling related questions were sent in through Ask FTW. You can go to the website ftwpodcast.com. Uh, there is a form on the bottom of every single page that you can submit uh, a, a question really easily. Um, there's also a ask button in the in the main navigation that will take you to another form that's a little bit more in depth that uh, you can ask a question there. And you can also reach us on Facebook, Twitter. We've got a Facebook group. We've got a community uh, over on Google Plus, and. Uh, we we also take your questions on YouTube, so keep them coming, and uh, hopefully we'll 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 come up with something else to to uh, to do here on Minecraft and uh, have our official uh, second episode. I think I called this episode one, yeah, episode one. So episode two will uh, eventually come out, uh, you know, at some point. So, anyways, uh, my name is Garvin. Nick, say goodbye. Goodbye. And uh, if you are new to us, we do a show, uh, a, a podcast that we record live on Tuesdays at ftwlive.com. That's at 8 p.m. every single Tuesday. We talk about WWE and TNA a, a little bit more in depth. So if this is your introduction to us, that's where you can find more about us. And we also have a blog at ftwpodcast.com. Uh, Nick's a writer. I write a little bit. We've got a, a full staff of writers that uh, that join us. So. And uh, this zombie just tried to climb this ladder, so we definitely have to remove that. But I'll get on that after we get off of this. So, anyways, uh, we'll see you guys.